In this video, I'm going to be overclocking and testing this new Ryzen AI mini PC from B-Link. And with the overclock that I put on this thing, I mean, I'm seeing a really nice boost in GPU and CPU performance. This is keeping up with something like the 890M right now. And with this, we've only got the HX365 and the 880M. This is the new B-Link SER9 365 Pro. Recently on the channel, we took a look at it in its stock form factor, but I mentioned in that video when I showed you that from the BIOS, we do have some overclocking options. So in this video, I figured we'd get it out of the way and see how this thing performs. But if you're interested in seeing this in its kind of stock form factor, I'll leave a link for that video in the description. Now, in order to get this overclock, first thing we need to do is make some adjustments to the BIOS. So let's go ahead and move over there now. And in order to overclock this, we're going to do most of it from the BIOS here. With this new B-Link mini PC, I've noticed a few really awesome things here. Like from the advanced section in the BIOS, we've got AMD overclocking. But there was one thing that's missing. Usually from AMD CBS, we have another option here that'll allow us to up the TDP on this. And from the BIOS, I can't do it. So I'll have to use a third-party app. I've tested it and it does work. Just a word of warning here, it's not recommended to do this. I'm pretty sure this might void your warranty on the mini PC. B-Link does not condone overclocking, but it's here, and if I blow this thing up, it's my fault. From AMD overclocking, we're going to accept. There's a manual CPU overclock, which really is just kind of a core count control. But down here, we've got our precision boost override. It's set to auto, we're going to go to advance. CPU boost clock override, enable and we want a positive overclock. And from here, I believe we can only go up 200 megahertz. Yeah, only 200. But we've also got that GPU boost clock override, which will allow us to go up by 200 megahertz. Right there. There's a graphics curve optimizer that we can also mess around with. And there's an overall curve optimizer that we can use here. But for this video, what I'm gonna be doing is just overclocking that iGPU I'm gonna mess around with that curve optimizer. It's gonna take me a little while to get it right. We're gonna go up 200 megahertz on the CPU. And we've also got PBO limits that we can set here. Disable, motherboard, manual. I will have to adjust this just a little bit. Basically what we're gonna be doing here is just taking it up as high as it can go. So we're gonna to go to save changes and exit and get into Windows. I've been up and running a while now with this overclock going, and as you can see, we've got that Ryzen AI9 365 with those Radeon 880M graphics. This mini PC from B-Link did come with the RAM RDA 8000 megahertz, but we also did an overclock on the GPU. And just out of the box with this overclock, it's not going to make a huge difference. We do need to do one more thing, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. From CPU-Z, if we run a stress test real quick, you'll see that this is only going to jump up to around... 54 watts, and it will go up to around 65 when we put a load on the GPU, but even at 65 watts with the HX365, it's not going to give us the maximum clocks on the CPU and GPU at the same time, so we need to take this up a bit, and for this, I use a third-party application known as x86 Tuning Utility. We're going to take this up. I've already got a preset. Now, when I stress this CPU out right down here, We'll see this jump up to close to 90 watts. So actually, we're right there at 90 watts. And yeah, that's quite a bit for a mini PC like this. And so far, I've been up and running for about an hour and 40 minutes with it. I haven't run into any crashes or anything like that. We're getting a huge boost in performance on the CPU and GPU with this overclock. Now, I want to show you the overclock on that iGPU because we did go up by a bit. This should go up to 3100 megahertz. Yeah, it's getting close. There we go. And you'll see with the CPU, we're not putting a huge load on it. This is already pulling close to 60 watts. So it's feeding as much as it can to that iGPU. And of course, the CPU is pulling just a bit here. But we're really not even putting a load on the CPU right now. But I'll tell you, with this setup here, this chip performs absolutely amazingly. I did run some benchmarks on this thing. And the first one here is Geekbench 6. At the top, we're sitting with a single core of 2,747, multi 12,862, and this is at that 54 watt TDP. But at the bottom, we've got the overclock scores, single now at 2,951, and multi close to 15,000 on a mobile chip. We're at 14,889. This is a nice boost in single and multi-core performance for sure. 
Next thing we have here is 3D Mark Time Spy for that iGPU, the A80M. At the top, stock 3602. At the bottom, with the overclock. So we're up to 3100 megahertz instead of 2900 megahertz. 4056. And of course, we've got 12 compute units here. It's still not beating the 890M, but we're getting real close. Just seeing the scores, there were a few games that I wanted to test at 1440p, and something like Forza Horizon 5 is a very well optimized game. We're at 1440p high with no FSR, so we're at a true 1440p here. And let me just show you, I was really impressed by what this thing can do. 1440, and if we move over to graphics, we're at high, so we're at that high preset, and usually I drop this down to medium, you know, even at 1080 on these chips. But at 1440p on this overclock Ryzen AI9 HX365, we're seeing an average of around 95 FPS. And I did test out 4K at high. Unfortunately, we're right there on the edge. So we were only seeing an average of 56 at 4K high. Dropping it down to medium will give us an average of around 68. Next up, Skyrim Special Edition, 1440, high. And if you take a look at Afterburner, we're only at 58 FPS with a little bit of a fluctuation. Same thing's happening with Fallout 4 right now and this latest AMD driver on these iGPUs. But even with it dipping down just a bit, I mean, I definitely call this steady at 60, 1440 high. Next one I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077, and we're at 1080 low, FSR set to auto. So with this, yeah, I mean, going down the low, it's going to get us over 60 FPS. At medium, we're right there around 55, but with the way it's set up right now, we're seeing an average of 74. Now, as we know, with this game, we do have frame generation, and frame gen works amazingly on this A80M iGPU. So moving over there, 1080 low with frame gen enabled, we're getting over 100 FPS with Cyberpunk 2077 on an iGPU. Even in the super dense, highly populated area, and of course, there are people out there that just don't like frame gen, but I'm working with an iGPU and I want as much as I can get out of these little machines, so I don't mind using it. we're seeing an average of 64 FPS. So we're right over that edge. And I mean, we could drop it down to FSR performance or even test out IGTI scaling here. Personally, I think this would be more than playable. If I didn't have that frame counter on, I'd be more than happy playing it like this. But just like Cyberpunk, we do have FSR frame gen, but this is FSR 3.1 frame gen. And with it enabled, we can take the setting up from medium to high now and get over hundred FPS on average. And I will admit when this game first launched uh, about a week ago, maybe two weeks at the time I'm making this video, performance was not great on these iGPU. And we still run into some issues here and there, but with the updates they've put out, it has dramatically increased performance across the board. Next on the list, we've got Marvel Rivals. I had to drop this down to 1080, we're at medium. And there are some cases where I did see a dip under 60 when there was a lot of characters on screen. Right now, it's pretty steady. We're seeing an average of around 64. But just note, they're still working on this game and hopefully we do see a performance increase later on. And finally, we've got God of War Ragnarok, 1080p, low, FSR set to balanced with no frame gen. And this gave us an average of around 67. Really impressive, and if you want to take it up, yeah, you can use frame gen. But given the fact that I didn't need to use it here with this HX365 and that overclock is really impressive. So overall, with the overclock on the HX365's iGPU and CPU, we're seeing a nice boost in performance. Now, these RDNA 3.5 iGPUs are really great, 
My favorite right now, obviously, is the HX370 with that 16 compute unit, 890M, but this is keeping up way better than I ever thought it would, especially with that overclock. It's not something I'd recommend doing if you do pick one of these up. I mean, power consumption's gonna be increased, heat's gonna be increased, but I still wanted to show it off because I thought it was pretty impressive that we were able to do this with a mini PC. But that's gonna wrap it up for this one. If there's anything else you wanna see running on this, be it a different operating system, more games, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.